Okay, so now we can get into the journey of me finding out I have MS. And this is uh, where I think we can have a little bit of fun because it's something that I like to laugh at because at times it was a little ridiculous, especially that I didn't think anything was wrong. As I'm gonna give you the highlights, you're going to probably say to yourself, Sarah, that's not normal. <laughs> so basically all the, the major stuff started happening about July, June of 2020. We all know how the world was panicky. I was panicky, that's for sure. I was in dental school at the time when things started really going downhill. They went, you know, everyone should just go home. I've had some anxiety in the past, but not to this extent. I was full-fledged panicking a lot after being sent home from school and being anxious. That's not a great combination for the mental health situation upstairs. So my friend Amol at the time, He's still my friend, for now. <laughs> he said, you know what? Let's go up to my family's cabin up north. There's no people at all. We could go hiking and we can kind of get away from the city. And that trip was so much fun, but it's also where some bad things started to happen. Basically, hi, come here. What I did not know at the time is that two major exacerbators for MS symptoms for feeling really bad are heat and stress. And uh, summertime, pandemic, it was pretty hot outside. I was in the top floor bedroom and I found myself when I would sleep and then wake up and be very hot, full blown panic attacks. And although I'm certain that most of this panic was because of the pandemic and how I was not in a great mind state. I also think part of it was because of my central nervous system being so inflamed and not okay because I'll get to this later but after I received initial treatment I I've tried I haven't been able to feel any panic or anxiety which is amazing. What I ended up doing was running like a couple inches of really cold water in the bathtub and just kind of sitting in there and shivering and being like, this is just my life now. <laughs> I'm just very scared all the time. And in general, although I was anxious, this was a new feeling where I just felt really bad inside. But you cool down with some ice water and things got better. A couple of days later, we went hiking in some sand dunes in the hot summer sun. And about a quarter of the way through, um, my legs gave out and I just needed to lie down under a small tree. <laughs> and at the time I thought this was just the panic disorder that I was dealing with now, but um, I distinctly remember my legs giving out and then panicking. So the first signs were my heat exhaustion. Now cut to around August, um, so dental school is a lot like other professional medical schools uh, where it's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, a lot of work, I mean, I think we had something like 10 finals in a week or something. So we, needless to say, I was looking at my computer screen for long periods of time. And eventually after my last final, I woke up the next day and I couldn't focus my eyes. The best way I can think to describe this is if you've been to the eye doctor, they'll do this test with like a pen and they'll say, look at the tip of the pen and follow it no matter where it goes. So if you can probably see, I hope that my eyes are working, that they should be crossing. So from about a laptop's length away, after I woke up, I could see fine, I could see this pen. But when I would look up and try to focus on the outside world, my eyes, uh, they would not focus for about 24 hours. The next day, I was driving home to my parents' house as it was less of a COVID hotspot and I had a break from school and I started to feel like I did um, earlier in the summer, really off, like something was wrong. I was talking to my parents throughout the day about how I thought this eye was swollen. And I didn't think that was too far-fetched because the day before I wasn't able to uncross my eyes. <laughs> and the reason why I thought that is because whenever I would smile, this eye seemed like it was being squished more than this one. But what I didn't know was it wasn't because my eye was swollen. It was because this half of my face just 
wasn't working. By the time I woke up the next day, uh, this side of my face was paralyzed, which I went to the ER, as one does. I remember distinctly getting into uh, a wheelchair and I was being taken to get a CAT scan. He was rolling me down in the wheelchair, really cool guy. He's like, you know, it could also be a stroke. And I remember thinking, could be. <laughs> I was diagnosed at the time with Bell's palsy. So I was on about 50 milligrams of prednisone for a week. And at the time, I remember them saying, this is kind of a hefty dose. You might feel weird. You might have trouble sleeping. So just know this could be a lot for your system. Keep that in mind. They said that about 50 milligrams. After about like a week and a half, the symptoms had mostly subsided and I was feeling better. And at this point, I'm back in school, fully in it. But I did have some minor residual things, nothing that really aroused too much concern to me at the time. But uh, when I would be walking to school and going to cross the street, I noticed that I could not move my eyes to my peripheral. My eyes just kind of stopped. And as they would get closer to the area, they would hurt. And having your eyes hurt is never a good thing. So I called my optometrist out there and then I also had called a neurologist and they did not have appointment until August of 2021. And as you can tell, as of right now, that still hasn't happened. That would be still months from now. I was like, well, I did what I could. I told my doctors, um, I'm in school, I'm busy. And I remember at this time also having some very strange minute symptoms. I told my primary care doctor that when I'm laying down and I breathe in really deep, my rib cage vibrates. <laughs> to which she was like, what? Because that's a weird symptom. And I didn't know at the time I was kind of describing it wrong. The reason why I was doing that is because as I would breathe deep, my chin would, sorry, <laughs> get closer to my chest. And whenever I do that, there's a vibration that runs down my spine. This is a common MS symptom. Afterwards, once I uh, learned of this, I looked it up and almost every result on Google is, you might have MS. Anyway, cut to about a month later. This is probably like early October. I, in dental school, at this point, we're not working on actual patients. We're still practicing on mannequins with like plastic teeth so we can hone our skill before moving on to patients. So we have practicals which are like tests where we learn a procedure and now we have three hours and we have to do it and then pass it in and then the professors go hmm that's good or that's not good at all i remember taking uh one practical specifically all of a sudden i had to pee so bad so much so that i was like rocking in my chair <laughs> i remember that just being a weird symptom and that's actually that's actually something i've had for a couple of years after a couple of weeks it had been getting worse and worse but again i'm busy with my head down in the books and I'm not really paying too much attention to it. I'm on the phone with my dad and we're talking about how still in the midst height of the pandemic, a lot of businesses are closed and a lot of people have closed their bathrooms. So he's driving back home and he can't find a bathroom. Nowhere's open. He has to go to the bathroom very bad. And eventually he finds a, one gas station that has a bathroom that's open and he gets to the door to open the door to go to the bathroom and he pees himself because it had been like 40 minutes and he's only human. So we're laughing because that's funny. <laughs> and I said, dad, that's the, like, that's so funny. Just yesterday I was walking home from school and all of a sudden I had to pee so bad that I had to kneel down and then I peed like on the sidewalk. What I didn't know was that I was on speakerphone. And so my mother takes the phone and she goes, what? I'm like, oh, mom, it's fine. I'm just busy and not making time for potties. <laughs> to which she says, go to the ER. After talking with my mom, I had recognized um, with her mom instincts that something might be wrong. So I went to the ER and I was telling the nurse, I said, you know, back in August, my face was paralyzed and now my eyes hurt and I can't see peripheral vision. And now I can't control when I have to go to the bathroom. I think I might have a nerve condition. And she was like, well, typically eyes and blood are not related. You might just have some other condition. We'll test you for a UTI. That was negative. They sent me home. So then I was home that night in the shower washing my little hair. I noticed that I couldn't really feel the tips of my fingers. And um, it had been a long day. 
I was in the ER for many, many hours. It was also like 2 a.m. by the time I got home. So I thought, I'm just gonna go to bed. And if I wake up and it's still a problem, then we'll go back to the ER. So I woke up and uh, my hands were numb and my feet were numb. So I called my mom and I was like, mama. <laughs> in mom fashion, she said, go to the ER. And um, this was very different, the um, response that I got. When I came there and I said, I was just in here yesterday and now my hands and my feet are numb. Your girl didn't wait a second. I was in a wheelchair. I was in my own personal room. Even though I had made an appointment with a neurologist for August of 2021, I had not one, not two, but three neurologists in my hospital bed. <laughs> not in my bed, <laughs> in the room. They're all just like, hey. So they gave me a lot of tests um, about cranial nerves so I would try to push or resist to test if I had like even strength and I did everywhere I had you know tests where you touch your nose to either side um walking around on my tiptoes trying to balance and everything seemed fine but at this point the numbness had spread to my hips and um the better part of my arms so one thing that they did find that was odd was the ever spreading numbness. And also when they would check my reflexes, they said I was a bit too brisk. So like if this is my little knee, the common reflex of them hitting your kneecap and then your leg kicks out like that, mine was kind of like almost instantaneous. So they said, usually this has something to do with the central nervous system. Let's do an MRI. So in general summary, I've skipped over a lot. The, you know, I didn't know something was wrong consciously but subconsciously I clearly felt it um things were going awry <laughs> with my face and um uh, numbness and everything and um I was very very easily upset easily stressed out easily panicky for months so those are all bad things for having a mess it makes it worse in dealing with panic attacks there was times where I was even nervous to go on planes and stuff and just be being trapped or being not in control of a situation. So the idea of going into MRI and having to sit still for 20 minutes may not sound terrible, but at the time, I mean, it was really scary to me. And then they came in to get me for the MRI and they said, so it's gonna be about two hours of not moving. In retrospect, I can say I'm very proud of myself. I had a very quiet and motionless panic attack for two hours. <laughs> but uh, all was well. They did an MRI of my brain and my spinal cord. And I went back to my room and remind you, this is during the height of COVID. So I can't have any visitors. My mom is across the country. So I was sitting in my room with the lights off and I was like really scared because the numbness was now up to my neck. So from uh, below my head, I was fully numb, not knowing I had MS at this time, having the doctors go like, hmm, that's, that seems normal, that's weird, and the numbness was spreading, um, and I was in a dark room, and I was alone. I was very scared at this time. Um, and I didn't know what was going to happen, so I, <laughs> I kind of made peace with myself, and I was like, well, this doesn't look so good. Then my neurologist, who I've grown to love very much, but uh, at the time I think he may have needed to work on his people skills because in the dark room he's standing in the doorway and he comes in and he just says, you have multiple brain lesions. So that was a bigger pill to swallow, although I was very lucky to have a disease where many people live very long lives with MS. And when I was first diagnosed, they had given me kind of like a punch of steroids to decrease the inflammation that was happening in my central nervous system that was contributing to my numbness. If you remember before, uh, when I had the facial paralysis, which was a symptom of MS, uh, actually, uh, they put me on the 50 milligrams of prednisone and said, this is a pretty hefty dose. I was put on 1,250 milligrams a day. <laughs> for five days. So luckily my body was like, I, I don't know what to do with this. I'm gonna sleep for five days. 
they proceeded to tell me that they were surprised that I was still walking because I had a collection of lesions. But the main reason why I was having such sudden problems with um, my body was because of two larger lesions at the top of my neck or so at the beginning of like my spinal cords. Although a lot of the things seemed normal at the time and I was just getting this sudden numbness, things came later that were not so normal. And I, I think I'll save um, all that stuff for a different video if um, that might help some people going through uh, these kind of symptoms. But I had a lot of trouble walking, um, lost some vision for a while and also lost um some sense of like where my limbs were in space <laughs> but spoiler alert we're doing so much better so yes um i really hope that this might help some people to to feel like they may be going through something like this with someone else um because i can't believe how helpful that was to me to find people that were also dealing with chronic illnesses so in summary getting a diagnosis like this can be very scary but I want you to know that myself and others going through similar things are here with you. So I have left a lot of links down below to all of the sources that I talked about in this video. If you feel like you want to educate yourself about it, I encourage you to check out those sources because they are really, really great resources. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, I would love to read your comments down below, any kind of questions that you have. If you're interested in a little bit more about MS experience education or other video that I mentioned beforehand, you can go ahead and subscribe down below. And until next time, see you later. See you later got my hair in there. How much coffee can I drink? Have a cup. Before I'll die. Okay, bye.